Hello, everybody. My name is Joseph Figlioli. You're probably wondering, why am I wearing a dress and a funny-looking hat? Well, I'm Muslim. I converted to Islam about seven years ago, but I grew up in a Catholic household. I remember waking up at 7.30 in the morning to go to 8.30 Mass. My mom would drag me and my brothers out of bed, get our church clothes on, and go to church. But as time went on, I started questioning things about life, just how we got here and how to get closer to God. So as time went on, I researched different religions as, as well as attending church. And I felt uh, that other religions were not answering the questions I had, but Islam came about. And I was like, no, not Islam. I can't, I can't be associated with these people that are on the news and all that stuff. But I met, a, I met a Muslim person, one of my good friends nowadays, and I just saw like, the character that they had and their love for God. And I just wanted to be like those kind of people. And so I researched Islam, and I just fell in love with it. It answered everything I had, or it answered, had to answer all the questions I had about God and the little path I wanted to go on. So you guys are probably dying what I'm wearing. So this is called a thobe, and this is called a kufi. And you probably see Muslim men wearing this time and time again. It's completely optional, but you might see them during Friday prayer or during special uh, holidays, and maybe Friday prayers as well. And for me, these clothes are very important. They express my Muslim identity to other people. It sh and it also teaches me that I should not be acting a certain way or hanging around in a certain environment. It keeps me reminding that God is watching me. And also, it's, very, it's a very uh, conventional or convenient because I can just wake up in the morning, just put this on, put my hat on, don't have to worry about my hair, and I can step out of the house. So I kind of have a double identity. It's not a medical condition, I promise. But I have what's called, yeah, double identity. And for me, it's balancing culture and religion. And you may, people in the audience may have a, a form of double identity as well. You probably don't even know about it. How you act at home versus how you act at school. Or how you act in front of your friends and how you act in front of your mom and dad. And maybe sometimes your parents choose a degree for you and you don't want that degree. You want to be your own person. But for me, it's culture and religion. And for, when I go to my parents' house, I have to, that is very, uh, very seen. And for me, I have to take off my thobe and my kufi to please, to make my family feel more comfortable. And to make my family feel more comfortable. And also when prayer time comes, it's very hard. I have to be very strategic of where I pray because I don't want to make my family feel uncomfortable. And sometimes I will go pray in the closet downstairs or sometimes I'll have my brother watch me and make a, as a lookout so no one uh, catches me. And I feel that my family had, uh, the reaction my family had is, uh, I think it's normal. Because yes, I grew up in a Catholic household. And I was, that all these norms that we, we used to do. But now everything has changed. I practice the Muslim religion and I wear these kind of clothes nowadays. And I understand that they're angry. And I think if I was in that situation, I would be the same way. And also, the biggest change, my family was not only the person, or only the, only thing that had to suffer this change, also the Muslim community. Not many Muslim community uh, mosques are very open, in, are open to uh, converts because they're really either like a Bengali mosque or Pakistani mosque or Arab mosque, and they're just in their social groups. So when a white guy, like me, walks through the mosque, they're like, is he lost? And like, I think he should be you know, going that direction. But I'm just there to pray like everybody else. One time, I went to a mosque and I was coming for early for prayer. And I swear, this guy, I think he, he was frozen. Like, I think he's lost. And so I you know, sit down in my prayer space, just ready for the prayer to start. And he was looking at me. And I'm like, OK, um, can you look the other direction, please? <laughs> and I look the other direction to make it look like I'm not staring. And then I look at him again. He's still staring in the exact same face. And I'm like, OK, I don't know if I should feel comfortable. I just creeped out right now. But I'm just going to look the other direction. And you know, I think for, for the Muslim community, it's a big change. And they're not used to that. And for me, you have to get to know me as a, uh, know me as a person. 
and you'll understand that, yes, I'm a convert to Islam. I am, did not grow up in this community. Yes, I'm seen as an outsider, but I'm just here like you to pray and worship God and then go home. And you guys go with your family, I'll go my way. So sometimes when you have dual identity, your two worlds collide. That was for me when I was at a wedding. So I was at a cousin's wedding and uh, they were trying to get me to drink. A family member comes up and asks me to drink. I'm like, no, no, I can't drink. For those who don't know, in, Islamic, in the Muslim religion, we can't drink. It's one of the things that's forbidden. So they come up to me, ask me to drink. They can't like, peer pressure me. I'm like, no, I can't, I can't. And I'm like, I almost, like, to be honest, I almost cracked because I wanted to be a part of that group. I wanted to be like, not seen as an outsider. I wanted to be a part of them. But I told myself, no, I can't do it because God's watching. And I made a pact to myself early on in my life that I would not drink. And so she comes up to me and says, Allah will forgive you. Allah will forgive you. I'm like, yeah, it's not that easy. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, people who have dual identity, they sometimes have suffered hate. For example, police brutality happens, random searches at the airport, or even ICE agents who patrol mostly immigrant neighborhoods. For me, when I was at school, I was basically hate at. I was spit at. And I was, you know, I was crossing the street. I had an extra pep in my stuff. You know, I got out of class early. I was so happy. And as soon as I made to the crosswalk, I noticed another guy coming up, and he was on a skateboard. And when he, was on his, when he put his skateboard down, he looked at me. And he had a total like, facial reaction totally changed. Like, I don't even know how to describe it. it was, he just had so much anger. And so when uh, I just looked at him, and I'm like, maybe he's just having a bad day. I'll just leave it alone at that. But, but when, he, when the light turned green, he crossed the crosswalk on a skateboard uh, really fast at me, and he spit at me. And I was just totally in shock. First of all, we live, this community, the Wade State community is very diverse. So I was in shock that someone actually did that. And, and I never suffered hate. Ever since I've been Muslim, I have never suffered hate from anybody. And it just really scared me because if, if, that, that he's thinking negative about me. He doesn't even know me. He has this identity that I'm those people on TV because I dress a certain way. But I'm not like that. And so I was just standing there in shock, and I'm like, what if I was just Joseph? What if I just took this stove off and this kufi off, and I was just in jeans and a t-shirt? And I, I, nothing would have happened. We would just go our separate paths. And for me, this was an eye-opening experience, because I, I feel like I learned a lot from this, that I'm a part of two worlds. Having dual identity, it gives me has two worlds, that I'm Italian and Polish, and I'm also Muslim. And it's also has also taught me to respect my family. Yes, I understand my family is Christian and they're Catholic, practicing Catholic. And they're proud of their religion. But I'm proud of my religion too. So every time I go to my house or my, visit my mom, I have to respect what they do. So I, you know, when they do the uh, prayer for a dinner, I put my head down in respect. And also, I, shoot, I feel like I got in a closer relationship with my mother through this. Because in Islam, there's a saying that heaven lies under your mother's feet. And I feel that every time I see her, I think of that, and I have to respect her. Everything that she says and everything she does, I do. And also, you know, for, for the, a lot of the community out there, I understand that some people are not very open. And I receive that. You know, I live in a mostly immigrant neighborhood, and I've seen as a, I'm looked at as an outsider. But, but I just want to tell people that I'm no different than anybody else, and nobody is different than anybody else. We're all human. We all have two eyes, hands, uh, legs, arms. We're just like each other. We all bleed red. So when someone looks at you and thinks of hate, just remember that we're all the same. And also, I want to tell like, the individual person, you know, having a dual identity is actually a good thing. You can learn a lot from it, and it can carve who you are, and, treat, and you, can look at, it, you can carve who you are. And that's all I want to leave off with today. Thank you.